So when you first load Aurora DSP, this is the basic interface and preset that you will see. Up here on the top is your basic toolbar. You know, if you've been using any program any length of time, you understand how it works. We have the name of the plugin who was created right here. We have the preset window here with the save button for preset window located right here. We have a moon icon, which changes between a light and dark GUI. We have a tuner with this little triangle icon, and then the info button here, which gives us more information and the version of Rhino currently being used. Now when using Rhino, there is a suggested workflow. Basically, you have the in, the pre, the EQ, the power amp section, or IR, the FX, delays and stuff like that and then finally the out module so if you view the plugin sort of in a top-down Z manner here you'll understand how the flow of the plugin works so the first module obviously is the input module now this is the small version of the module but if you click the button right here you will get an expanded view with more functionality here we have the input dial this changes the input or uh, drives more input into the plugin from your DI file now there are three ways you can adjust the incoming DI file. We have smooth, normal, and hot. Smooth does a gentle roll off to the top end. So if you have very bright guitar pickups or you have very bright strings, or when you record, your guitar just sounds very bright, you can use the smooth button here, do a very gentle roll off of the top end frequencies to darken your sound a little bit. The normal button actually does nothing. There is no change. Now here we have the hot functionality, which is a high shelf, a very aggressive high shelf, I might add, at 2K and above, which adds attack and clarity to your DI signal. Moving along further, we have basically the noise gate and you have a display of the data information going here. So you have a much accurate uh, ability to adjust the noise gate so that you're not cutting off any information. Of course, you can adjust the attack and the release of the noise gate. And then finally here on the bottom, we have a high pass filter, which is something that is very common to do with low tune guitars or guitars, seven, eight, nine strings to clean up the low end. And you can change the slope angle of the cut right over here. Please note that your mouse must be in this location right here and you can use the mouse wheel to adjust the slope DB range. Moving on, we have the pre module. Again, this is the mini view of it let's open the expanded view so think of this in lanes this is the first lane this is the second lane this is the third lane this is the fourth lane all of these are different pedals we can consider this the pedal board now if we look above here on top we have four different sounds these four unique sounds can be perfect in different recording situations so i definitely recommend going and toggling between all different all four of them differently to see which one as a bass seems to work best for the music that you're working on. Now once you've decided upon that we can look at the pedal board which would be these four lanes as, we, as I just discussed. The first and top one is a typical screamer denoted by the word scream here. Here we can change the tone, the gain, and the level of our screamer as well enable, enable it on or off and we can change the amount of how much it's working and moving into the drive section. Additionally, we have a brute pedal, which solves the problem of low tune guitars or an eight string guitar or higher, not having enough gain or note definition or clarity. If you need gain, enable brute because brute is capable of giving you 28 decibels of extra gain and loudness, as well as bass and treble knobs here to fine tune your tone even more. And of course, there's a mix knob here or a mix level, let's call it, where you can mix in the amount of the brute you would wish to go into the drive. Continuing on, we have a fuzz and a push pedal. Fuzz is exactly what it sounds like. If you need noise and you want to have a fuzzy wall of noisy guitars, the fuzz pedal is what you're looking for. You can also brighten or darken this particular functionality by clicking the word bright or clicking it off if you need to do so. Last in this pedal chain is a simple compressor. So you can enable it by clicking on push. You can adjust how much uh, the compressor should work in your signal and mix it in and mix it into the signal here. Keep in mind for these to work, the pedal needs to be enabled. So if it is not enabled, 
cannot work with this functionality. Please also keep in mind that you are not stuck to using just one pedal. You can use all the pedals that you want and you can mix them in to how much they need to go for your signal. So you can have all four pedals here with the bright button enabled and you can mix in exactly to which degree you want each pedal to work for your signal. So if you want to get some extra interesting sounds with, ex with different combinations that you could really do in real life, this is a great way to do that. So let's move over to the drive section here. One thing to keep in mind is this button that appears off to the left. Now every preamp here has two modes. As you can see, this name is changing. You can go between the two different modes by clicking on it. White, it's not enabled. Blue, in this case, it's enabled. If I go to this preamp, I click. Purple is enabled, white is disabled. So each preamp has two different tone voicings or two different functionalities that you can just choose from. Choose which one sounds best to you. The drive knob here, obviously this is for adjusting how much drive you would like into the signal. We also have a mix knob so you can mix in how much drive you would like in your DI. And then finally down here we have the tone stack. Now this tone stack is quite aggressive. It does work so oftentimes you will not need to do very much to have great results. So you have a low, a mid, and a treble tone pot here and you have high pass and low pass functionality as you would expect. Moving on, let's go to the EQ module. Now the EQ module comes pre-configured to deal with many major problems of amp simulator guitars. You will see here that there is a dip in the low mids around 400-ish or 250. This takes care of a lot of the low end buildup that is quite typical of recorded amp simulator guitars. So it should sound good straight out of the box. However, you can do your own EQ moves as such you can change the different type of curves that you want to do, different type of EQ, curves, moves, and adjust accordingly, frequency, and the bandwidth. When you do all that, and you leave the extended version, this mini version, this mini view, accurately represents what you have, and you, but you can still make changes just right here on the graphic interface if you need to do so. However, there is another piece of functionality that you can do within the EQ module, and that is the EQ match. This is a great way to create unique guitar tones within Rhino without needing to use any other plugin chain. To do this, we are going to match the EQ of this particular guitar tone, and Rhino is going to automatically create three different tone variations using the other existing preamps in the plugin. So we're using the blue preamp, we will come up with three other tones based on the other preamps that we can use to mix in together. This is quite simple. We just click on the on button here. We click get tone. We press play. We click done. We click match. And now we have three other tones that we can use to blend into the original guitar tone. Moving on, we have the effects modules and they are exactly what they sound like you can in expand these effects modules and have more parameters that you can adjust for a flanger, a chorus, and a phaser. Plus you have the mix levels here so you can have all three effects going on at the exact same time and control exactly how much should be in your signal. You also have a time module for echo, delay, and reverb, both classic and convolution reverb with included reverb IRs, but you can also load your own if you would like. This leads us to the impulse response section, which is very powerful. We open this and we have a lot of extra functionality that we can look at. So right here, we can already change how much present, resonance, and drive is in your guitar tone going into the IR loader. The presence knob will adjust around the 8K region of your guitars. The resonance knob will adjust around the 120 Hertz area of your guitars and the hot knob basically adjust the 1K area of your guitar. So if you need some extra aggression to go through the mix, you can do that with the hot knob. We also have three different types of EQs that we can play with. Flat, studio, and live. Flat is exactly what it sounds like. What you hear, that's what you get. Studio is a combination both of flat and various API tonal characteristics. Live has power tube characteristics with a strong boost both in the lows and the high end of your guitar. So you can choose which one you would like to use and all three options here 
will make the IR section behave and sound different. Speaking of the IRs, we have four different IR positions and we can move with this dot, if we click and drag, we can select the position essentially wherever we want. And we'll be creating a combination of the four IRs that we see here. Don't forget, however, is we basically have three types of presets that we can load based on the type of guitar sound that we want. We have a rhythm preset, a clean preset, and a leads preset. You can see that all of the IRs are changing based on the type of guitar sound you're trying to build. Of course, you can experiment as much as you want. This is just a starting point to help you create tones faster. Additionally, you can turn the impulse response loader on or off if you would like to use your own third-party impulse responses. Finally, this leads us to the out module. Not much to see here, but important nonetheless. First and foremost, we see this tight level here. Now, if we cl click and engage this, it turns pink and we can use it. Tight is essentially the Andy Sneap C4 trick. It's a multiband compressor between the ranges of about 90 hertz to 250 hertz, which helps clean up the low mid section of a guitar during palm mutes. This will thin out your guitar tone a little bit, allowing the snare, your kick drum, and your bass to all better work together so there's not a bunch of mud so you have a lot more definition in your overall mix. So that is the tight functionality. And this is just your standard old limiter. It does exactly what you think it does. And you can even adjust the release time of how fast or slow you would like your limiter to, to work at. And finally, we have the output. You can adjust to 6 dB above Unity or 48 below Unity. So basically, you can ensure that you are getting a signal into your DAW that makes sense from the Rhino plugin. Rhino is the complete package and everything you need to create crazy, amazing, brutal guitar tones. It's all here in one plugin, convenient for you to use. If you have any questions about Rhino, please don't hesitate to contact Rhino support or leave a question down below. Good luck and have fun creating massive, brutal guitar tones with Rhino from Aurora DSP.